So in this video, we're gonna dive in to tarsal tunnel syndrome. We're gonna use our 3D anatomy model to show you all the key structures around this area before we talk about how this condition is diagnosed and how it's managed in practice. If you're ready, let's dive in. Hey guys, Khaled here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. So let's start by taking you through our 3D anatomy model to show you what the tarsal tunnel is and how tarsal tunnel syndrome comes about. So first of all, the tarsal tunnel. This is a narrow passage that is located on the medial side of the ankle between the tibia and the calcaneus. And it's important because there are a number of structures that run through it, which we'll touch upon in a second. Now, the tarsal tunnel is roofed by a piece of soft tissue called the flexor retinaculum. And ultimately, this flexor retinaculum acts as a protective layer to allow those structures to run through that tarsal tunnel. So, with those structures, there is a catchy phrase that you'll hear time and time again that denotes the different structures that run through the tarsal tunnel. Now, that catchy phrase is Tom, Dick and Very Nervous Harry, whereby the first letter of each of those words tells you the different structure that runs through it. So, we can try and remember it as follows. Tom stands for tibialis posterior, a key muscle involved in walking and maintaining the arch of the foot. Next, we have dick, and the key structure is flexor digitorum longus, which is responsible for flexing the toes and involved in various ankle and foot movements. And stands for artery, and in particular, the tibial artery. Very stands for vein, and in particular, the tibial vein. Nervous stands for nerve, and in particular, the tibial nerve, which is the crucial structure we consider in tarsal tunnel syndrome. And finally, Harry, which is a muscle of flexor hallucis longus. And so those are the key structures that make up the tarsal tunnel, Tom Dick and very nervous Harry. So as we said, out of all of those, the key structure we're focusing on in tarsal tunnel syndrome is the tibial nerve. Why is that? So, as the tibial nerve runs through the tarsal tunnel, it runs to the sole of the foot and it branches into the medial and lateral plantar nerves. Now, these two nerves supply all of the sensation and motor power to the small muscles of the plantar surface of the foot. Now, when we talk about tarsal tunnel syndrome. We remember that flexor retinaculum, as you can see on the screen now, which runs over the tarsal tunnel. Now, sometimes that flexor retinaculum can compress over that tibial nerve to cause pins and needles and numbness in the foot. How do we know that? Well, as we said, the medial and lateral plantar nerves which branch from that tibial nerve are irritated when we have tarsal tunnel syndrome because that flexor retinaculum is compressing over that tibial nerve and therefore changing the nerve supply for those medial and lateral plantar nerves. So, how do we assess and diagnose this? Well, the most common test done is Tinel's test over the tarsal tunnel. This is where we tap lightly over the tarsal tunnel where we're effectively tapping on that flexor retinaculum over the top of the tibial nerve. And we're looking to see whether or not this reproduces our patient symptoms of pins and needles or numbness in the foot. If it does, then that gives us a pretty good sign that it is the flexor retinaculum that is compressing that tibial nerve, which is recreating those symptoms. So therefore, Tinel's test for the tarsal tunnel, absolutely worth holding onto that test for your practice. So next, let's think about treatment. And ultimately, we can split the treatment options into conservative and surgical. And of course, when we're thinking about conservative treatment, the first thing that comes to mind is physiotherapy. So within physiotherapy, we could consider strengthening the tibialis posterior muscle. And this is because if we do strengthen it, this could improve support of the medial arch of the foot and this might help the patient's symptoms. Sometimes I've used anti-pronation taping with a patient as a trial to see if this helps. And if it does, then we could consider doing this as strengthening, but only in a way which is comfortable for the patient. But a lot of the work we might do is on activity and load management, really focusing with the patient on how much they do on their feet on a week to week basis and formulating a plan to modify this so that their foot doesn't get as much overload to hopefully settle symptoms down. 
Otherwise, a natural suggestion is analysing the patient's footwear and suggesting that they review to see if they can find some comfortable, supportive shoes with a good medial arch support to see if changing their footwear improves their symptoms. Some orthopaedic consultants will suggest using an orthopaedic boot for a period of time to see if this offloads the ankle and as a result may also settle symptoms down. We can also think about medication in the form of non-steroidal anti-inflammatories or in some cases neuropathic painkillers which are painkillers specifically targeting nerve symptoms. And finally, some sources will also suggest a corticosteroid injection to see if this can help settle symptoms down as well. Then, ultimately, if our patient's symptoms are incredibly persistent and haven't been alleviated by conservative measures, the next suggestion might be surgery. This would be in the form of a tarsal tunnel decompression surgery to hopefully reduce the compression on that tibial nerve to see if it improves our patient's symptoms. Of course, like many surgeries, this is absolutely a last resort and would only be selected for individuals where conservative management has not been successful. So guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please support us by smashing that like button and subscribe to our channel for all our best updates. Otherwise, we've got loads of resources on our Instagram account, at Clinical Physio, and on our website, clinicalphysio.com. My name's Khalid. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon here on Clinical Physio.